Welcome to our Sunday School Rally Day. And today we focus on the reality and the fact that Jesus loves children. He made them his top priority, and he made them our example. Jesus blessed them with himself, and we need to bless them by giving them Jesus. And we do that through our Sunday School, our Christian Day School, and through all, out, all of our ministries here at Holy Cross. Why? Because only Jesus can bless them with eternal life and hope for the future. And so we thank the Lord for our Sunday school, for our Christian day school, and all those who serve and teach in them. We are truly blessed. God bless our worship.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear, O children of God, you are a child or adult, teacher or learner, you who live at home or away, you who come to worship physically or virtually, and learn. We have gathered here to worship the Lord our God, the Lord alone. Hear, O children of, God, of our God, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. We will recite them to our children and talk about them at our home and at church. We will meet to hear and respond to God's voice. Through the generations, God continues to speak to us in the wonders of creation, in the stories from the Bible, and through the living Christ who taught us to journey together following God's ways. And we will share God's message in our teaching and our learning settings. And may our God bless us, bless all our resources for teaching and learning, and make us a blessing at home, across the street, and around the world. We come now to with confession and assurance. And passing on the faith from one generation to the next is an important responsibility. Faith is a part of life's journey, and our faith is formed in many ways and in many settings. The church and the home are partners in faith formation of our children, and so we confess. We confess that we have not always been faithful in sharing God's story. We haven't taken the time to talk about our faith at home as we should. Our language often lacks faith words, and our habits often have not shown that we follow Jesus, and too often we have become preoccupied with work and family life. We have failed to love God with whole hearts or single-minded devotion. Forgive us when we fail to make faith nurture a priority in our home and church life. And forgive us when we are unfaithful. Help us to draw ever closer to you. Listen, people. Our God is faithful and steadfast and closer than a heartbeat. Look for signs of God's activity within and around you, in your church community and family, everywhere you work and play, everywhere you go, God is there ahead of you. And open your eyes and your heart to God's surprising ways. And know that you are deeply loved. And most of all, know that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, this church is a family. Help us to learn together, to worship together, to share together, to play together, to pray together, to come to together and reach out to everyone with family love. Amen. The Old Testament reading comes from Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them with you sit at, when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie around, down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle today is found in 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that, we do not, that, is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies him just as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 19th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The people brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and to pray for them. But the disciples rebuked them. 
Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And when he had placed his hands on them, he went on from there. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, dear Christian friends. And welcome to our Sunday School Rally Day, in which we recognize the importance of understanding and loving our children to Jesus. I have a story that I've told before, and some of you are going to say, oh, no, not again. But others of you have never heard it before, and I just, it's a good story. So if you heard it, just pretend you haven't. But there were two brothers who were always getting into trouble. And whenever something went wrong in their neighborhood or in their school, they were usually to blame. Well, one day, their parents decided to ask their pastor for help. And the pastor decided he would see them one at a time. He wanted to remind them that no matter where they were or what they were doing, that God was always with them and that God saw them. So the pastor met with the first brother. He pointed his finger at him and said, Where's God? The boy looked under the desk. He looked in the corners of the room. He even looked out the window. And the pastor again said, where is God? And the boy panicked and ran out the door all the way home. And finding his brother, he dragged him up to their bedroom and he said, we're in big, big trouble. And the brother said, what do you mean, big trouble? He says, well... God's missing, and they think we took him. <laughs> Listen again to the gospel reading. Only this time we're going to use the account from Mark chapter 10, verse 13. It says, people were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. And when Jesus saw this, he was indignant, and he said to them, let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. What do we see from these accounts? The first thing we see is we've got to let the children come to him. Some parents in this account wanted to bring their kids to Jesus. 
And isn't that a great desire? Don't you want the same thing for your kids, for all children? I pray that all parents would want to get their kids to Jesus. We want them to see the truth and to know Jesus as their Savior and Lord of their lives. But the problem is, is that there are many barriers to kids getting to Jesus. And sometimes even those barriers come from the church. In this passage, the disciples felt that Jesus had better things to be doing with his time than hanging around with children. Unfortunately, there are times in the church when we do not place the priority on children's ministry that we should. It says that Jesus in the Mark account was indignant when he saw this. That word in the Greek means that he was very grieved, almost to the point of anger. But I'm so happy that we have a church that honors and values children and seeks to remove obstacles to getting to Jesus. And why is it so important for kids to get to Jesus? Well, these are the formative years. And we must all recognize that as parents, we only have our children for a limited number of of years in which to make an impact on their lives. And statistics show that people who do not know and follow Jesus before they leave high school probably never will follow him. But not only is every parent should be interested in the child's education, we need to be interested in their spiritual well-being as well. As Christians, we are to be sensitive to the spiritual needs of all. All children not just our own. I know that some of you may have grown up in a place that did not encourage children to be active participants in the church. I don't understand that. We as parents need Jesus too, and we need to show our children that Jesus is important in our lives too, and so we should be in worship with our children. There once was a little old lady who was amazed at how nice this young man in his 20s was. Every day he would help her gather things from her car or help her in her yard. And one day the old lady finally asked the young man, Son, how did you become such a fine young man? This young adult replied, Well, when I was a boy, I had a drug problem. The old lady was shocked. I can't believe that. And the young man replied, It's true. My parents drug me to church on Sunday morning, drug me to church on Sunday night, and even drug me to church on Wednesday night. (laughs) We need to be dragging our children too, don't we? Parents, get your children to Jesus no matter what it takes. Don't let anything come before that, not even education. Don't be so concerned with their getting an A on their math test that they grow up unequipped to face life's ultimate test. Don't be so concerned with athletics either. You don't want them to win the big game at the expense of losing out on what is truly meaningful in life. Don't get in the way of children coming to Jesus. Let them come. But secondly, we need to learn from them. Yes, we need to learn from our children. Jesus said that the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. You see, God does not want us to be children, but to be like them. It's not the age, but the attitude he's talking about. And children remind us of what childlike faith and childlike dependence is all about. There once was a dad who was walking with his daughter. He asked if she knew where she was going, and she says, no, daddy. He asked, does that scare you? And she says, Of course not, Daddy, because you are with me. You see, children remind us of what it is to look at the world with wide-eye wonder. They remind us of who we used to be before before the world beat us up and made us cold and apathetic. I love my conversations with my grandson, Miles. He's four. But he teaches me something each day especially about animals or dinosaurs. He says that when he grows up, he wants to be a paleontologist. But recently, I've been having a lot of back problems. And so the other night, as he was getting me an ice pack, he says, Pop, I'm going to be a paleontologist, and I'm also going to be a doctor, and I'm going to fix your back. You see, 
I am blessed because I get to take him to school most days. And in that 30-minute ride, I get to see the world through his eyes. And I would not trade that time for anything. I see what the Lord meant when he said, we can learn from them. In Mark 10, 15, it says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Now, what characteristic is Jesus talking about here? Jesus isn't talking about their humility. Because children are full of pride and selfishness. Just teach our preschool children one Sunday and you'll find out. He's not talking about innocence because children be, can be quite devious. They're looking for trouble. And he's not talking about obedience because children aren't the most obedient creatures known to man. But what is Jesus talking about? Jesus is talking about trust. Children are very trusting. They have a trust adults. They have to trust adults for their existence, for their food, for their clothes, for their welfare, for protection, education. Children have to trust. And this is the example Jesus wants to give us here. How do you enter into the kingdom of God? You have to trust Jesus to do for you what you can't do for yourself. Children are powerless and dependent. And that's what God wants us to see, see in, God wants to see in us, our total dependence on his power. For it is he who forgave us of our sins. And it is he who gives us eternal life. We can't get to heaven in our own strength, on our own goodness, on our own power, but it's only through the power of the cross, the cross on which Jesus died and shed his blood for our sins. And thirdly, we need to love them completely. It says that Jesus took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. What a great model for us in how to love. How do you learn to to love a child, you do what Jesus did. He took them, it says. Love means spending time with your kids. Jesus took the time to spend with these children. He made it a priority. And when it says Jesus blessed them, it means that he spoke love into their hearts. When was the last time someone really blessed you by speaking an encouraging word into your life? When was the last time you blessed your child by speaking love into their hearts? As a parent, so often the only time we speak to our children is to discipline them. That must be balanced by affirmation and affection. What I have realized as a grandfather is that I probably did not spend as much time as I should have with my own four children, and I missed out on so much. But I am so thankful that oh, I, I was taking care of the church. I had a wife who gave everything she had to her children and to the family, and she showed them what Jesus' love was all about. I just know that I probably have spent more time with my grandson, and I, have now, and I am now an advocate for fa families to spend time together. Dads and moms, take time. Make time. It's the most important thing. Because these children grow up way too fast, and soon they don't want to be with you. Do things together as a family, and that especially means to worship together. Come to church together. Do devotions together. We need to do what Jesus did. And what did he do next? He took them in his arms and into our, and he takes them into our arms and into our hearts, and he prays for them. And he blesses them with the best that we have to offer them. That's what he wants us to do. Jesus blessed them with himself. And we need to bless them every day by giving them Jesus. And it begins at home. Only Jesus can bless them with eternal life, with a hope for the future, with a faith that will sustain them in times of trouble, and a peace that will calm them when they hit rough waters, and with a love that will embrace them with all eternity. And what an opportunity we have before us this year. Let's not trivialize it. Let's not minimalize it. Let's not waste it. It says that he touched. It means he loved. That. Love means touching your children. 
Stories told of a little four-year-old girl who became frightened late one night during a thunderstorm. And after one particularly loud clap of thunder, she jumps out of her bed and she runs down the hall and she bursts into her parents' room and she jumps right in the middle of them in bed. She sought her parents' arms for comfort and assurance. Don't worry, honey, her daddy said, trying to calm her fears. And the Lord, he said, will protect you. The little girl snuggled closer to her father and said, I know that, Daddy, but right now I need someone with skin on. In these days of COVID-19 and virtual learning and children not being able to be with other children, the importance of parents touching and holding their child is more important than ever. Their teachers aren't able to give them hugs and, and their friends can't give them hugs and they need to be hugged. They need to be touched. It's what all of us need right now. And these air hugs, they just don't do it. So let God use us to take a child. Let God use us to lift them up and to place them in the loving arms of Jesus. So today, take that opportunity to bless a child. In Jesus' name, amen. Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, and was crucified and died and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead, and ascended into heaven, and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence to heal, judge, come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. Living God, you are the beginning of our journeys, our guide, and our destination. We remember our relatives and mentors, leaders and teachers who led us to faith by singing us songs and telling us Bible stories, by welcoming and accepting us, by praying for us without our knowing, and by showing us how to follow Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have been faithful to your people from generation to generation. Help us pass your faithfulness on to the next generation. And today we are dedicating ourselves and this year of Sunday School and Christian Education to you. May learning and worship together inspire us so that we share your good news with joy and confidence. Equip us to be diligent in faith sharing at home and nurture us to become passionate followers of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today we celebrate our new year of Sunday School and Bible study where we find the message of love and grace, healing and hope. Here we will have the chance to learn about the Bible, God's story. May, may already, we, may, we already thank you for the many ways we will respond and share this story through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for teachers who offer their time and talents, talents to teach about and encounter God with others and for this congregation who supports the faith nurture of their children and for parents and caregivers who nurture and respect their children at home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, even though we start this Sunday school year virtually, we know that your word will not ever return to you empty or void and so allow children and adults to come with energy and enthusiasm as we dedicate this year of Christian education to you, O oh God, and pray that through it we will grow as followers of Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And merciful Lord, you have shown great compassion to us. Teach us to show such compassion to others that we may welcome the stranger, love our neighbor in need, and be attentive to those new to the faith, or vulnerable to temptation. Help us to serve the refugees seeking safety and help us and give us the opportunity to share your gifts with those who live in poverty and want. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Father, you know our weaknesses of body and soul. Give to the troubled in mind your peace, to the suffering relief, to the sick healing, to the grieving comfort, and deliver the dying into everlasting life. Hear us especially as we pray for the Jordan family, Jason Theobald, Lloyd Spiral, Pastor John Zender, Steve Barbario, Agnes Simon, Pastor Storr, Jim Ehrenfried, Edie Mobley, Ruthie Ruder. We pray for, the Sherry, for Sherry and Pat Mackey as they mourn the loss of Aunt Betty but at the same time, they celebrate her victory that has been won by her Savior, Jesus, as she now rests in heaven. And also, we pray for those who we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, deliver us from this pandemic and pestilence, from disaster and danger, and from a sudden death, that kept in faith we may be preserved through this mortal life and in death be received into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So hear us, O Lord, who cry to you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, whom with spirit you are one God and one Lord, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And he is not in temptation, but deliver us from evil, and is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for never and ever. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you that you promise us that when you, two or more come together in your name, you are with us. Thank you, Lord, that you have been with us throughout this worship today and that you are with us right now. Inspire us to leave this place to love and serve you 
always in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.